As well as other fees and fines for not following the rules, tobacco retailers must also complete a training program. The city program voted unanimously, which brings the age restrictions up to date with federal tobacco leg legislation. Wow, city of Tempe raising the age to purchase tobacco to 21. That's only going to hurt Tempe businesses that sell tobacco. Because Tempe is tiny. And, and people that want tobacco that are under 21 and over 18 in Tempe are just simply going to have to go over to Phoenix or Guadalupe or Chandler or Mesa depending on which end of Tempe they live in and buy tobacco it's not going to do anything it's yeah, it's literally just the Tempe City Council hurting Tempe businesses. Damn. Keep in mind, I'm saying this is a non-smoker that, that doesn't support smoking. I do, however, support freedom, and it seems like they're going the wrong direction with that. I think the bigger problem is that they need to figure out at what age somebody's an adult. It's ridiculous that somebody can vote at 18, but yet in Tempe, they, they can't buy or consume alcohol or buy cigarettes or presumably any other tobacco product until they're 21. And I'm curious how that affects uh, purchasing weed, because that's also something that's been legalized in Arizona. But yeah, voting at 18 is fine. Okay, I need to wake the hell up. I'm so tired. I can't believe I overslept like this. So it's 3.34 p.m. Sunday, October 29th, 2023. I, um... Gosh, since the last video, what have we done? Well, I'm not turning left here, and I had to do the 143. Oh, they're working on resurfacing McDowell. That's what's going on. I'm acting so shocked with all the lane restrictions going on the other day. And all the traffic on McDowell. Yet I'm the one that's been talking in my vlog for like two weeks about how they've ground the edges down and they're working on resurfacing the street. Yeah, and sometimes my inability to put, to put obvious things together is... Uh, That's all right. It's uh, it's Sunday. It's Sunday. I can go this way and go right through the mini stack. There's never traffic on the mini stack on Sunday. Well, I shouldn't say never, but not usually. I like the kind of crap I got to deal with on the weekdays. That usually has me going. Usually has me going through the uh, airport as my quickest route to work. So I've been taking pictures of my timesheets, the physical handwritten timesheets, every day, every day except I missed one. I took it on Monday, forgot on Tuesday, took it Wednesday, took it Thursday. So I was going to try to calculate how many minutes I could stay late today to make sure I don't get it in overtime, but that I get my full 40 hours. Because they always need me late.
so the idea of me tracking my time was to know exactly how much time I still had to, to not go over 40 hours today, which is going to be a non-issue, because now even if I stay until page, until uh, email shuts down at midnight, I still won't be getting to 40 hours. I was told when I punctured the tire on that big SUV the day that I stayed the night at Priscilla's place to take her to her medical procedure that it was better for me to come in late than come in tired. So obviously I'm so tired I'm sleeping through alarm clocks that like that. And also Priscilla's been trying to call me and wake me up. I'm sleeping through all of that stuff. Obviously, I'm too tired to be driving. In fact, I kind of have my accounts right now. I'm tired. I was going to explain what happened after I, uh, after my last video. I unloaded, unloaded my equipment, obviously. And I didn't set anything up inside. I still haven't done that yet. But... I did lie down on my bed and work on editing my next video, but I decided that, that yeah, that was going to take too much time and I really wanted to catch the tail end of karaoke over at Wander Inn. So, I tell you, if I, if I had to do that over again, I would have just stayed in bed and finished my video and oh, fuck me. You know, I didn't check the traffic because it's Sunday and there's never any traffic to speak of on Sunday. And now I'm battling road closures and I, I should know that if there's one day they're going to screw up the roads with road closures, it's Sunday. trying to do it now. Um, whoa! It's entirely too much to look into the lane you're merging into before merging into a lane in this city. It really is. Well, I guess the bright side of going this way is I got some, got some great shitty driver footage. If that's the only thing I put in this channel, I probably have way more subscribers and views. But as I've said since I started this vlog, it, it serves primarily as a diary for a person that, due to mental illness, has a tough time remembering what happened the day before with any kind of clarity. And it's also a way for me to document my struggles as a person living independently with severe mental illness. Those illnesses being schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder, and while not properly diagnosed, I'm 100% confident that I also have autism spectrum disorder. Thinking of a back road called Greenfield Road, everybody's driving like such idiots on Thomas, I just want to be on the back road right And this is actually the shortest distance to where I'm going because this runs parallel to the canal as opposed to parallel to other streets that go north and south or east and west. And I, I, I've often done videos about Randolph Road because Randolph Road is a road that used to run at this angle. But Randolph Road was some kind of a thoroughfare out in the country before this area was city. 
Greenfield, on the other hand, runs at an angle and it, I shouldn't say frequently, but it every so often appears just south of that canal, paralleling the canal that same way. But it was never a thoroughfare. Like the places where it is are the places where it is. As far as I know, the possibility I might be wrong about that. I really wish I had a collection of Phoenix maps for like, I don't know about every year because that would be overkill, but certainly going back every, every, you know, for one for every 10 years, giving a snapshot of how much the Phoenix Metro has changed every decade since it started in the 1800s. And there's certainly things I can remember since moving here in 1972. Changes I can remember. And a lot of things I can see, you know, the evidence of change just by looking at what's here. Uh, as if I wasn't running late enough to work. And when I was looking over the freeway median, as I was headed north, and it's a good thing I was focused mostly on where I was driving since, uh, you know, the people in front of me were trying to smash into each other. Oh, damn. This is crazy. I'm thinking my best bet might have just been to stay on 44th Street and go through the airport. But I had no idea these kind of closures were going on. Wow, all that backup is trying to get on the 202 East. Well, hey, at least they're not trying to keep going on 24th Street. Wow. Sunday is not normally a bad traffic day. So Sunday is typically the day that you escape bad traffic if you're out driving. But yeah, it is, it is a day that tends to have more road construction than normal, where they try to work on roads that would really mess up the system if they were closed on a Monday. I love how when the left arrow turned green, two vehicles in front of me each rolled forward about two feet. It shows how much they're not focusing on the traffic light in front of them. That's red as it has been for a while. What's even funnier is the Chevy on the right, when the light did turn green, didn't move. What's she focusing on? That's something, something in her hand, and she's shaking. She's definitely distracted by something. yellow cab to my right has a sticker that says stop face mask required I kind of thought everybody was over that crazy virtue signaling theatrics apparently not I haven't seen that sort of thing on other yellow cabs, so I'm thinking if I saw that on that cab, I'd just be stepping into the cab behind him. Because A, I don't have a face mask. I quit carrying those a couple of years ago. And if he's got the masks, fuck off with that shit. Sorry, I'm not doing good about spitting my story out from last night. I'm tired. Traffic is... 
unusually annoying. I don't understand why I'm getting every red light on 24th Street. It used to be on all these major strodes that all the lights were synchronized. In this area, if you were going about 40 miles per hour, you would get every single light green. How did the city of Phoenix fuck this up? I mean, and I know this from years of being a taxi driver. That was my trick to getting around, is I just did the speed limit. Simple as that. And if I turned onto a road where I was out of sync with the lights, then I, you know, sped up or slowed down accordingly to get in sync with the lights. No, they're just all screwed up. Motorcycle behind me is playing terrible music very loudly. As if the loud and annoying bike isn't irritating enough. time I started DJing the house party last night. Oh, he is lane splitting. I do believe lane splitting has been legalized in Arizona. Old thing to do on a bike that size, though. to the bar anyway. I figured there was a chance that maybe your phones were messing up and I just see her there. But maybe about 15 minutes after I showed up, 20 minutes after I showed up, she texted me and asked where I was. I'm like, uh, I'm at the bar, don't worry. And then she mentioned him. She had just fallen asleep unexpectedly. Fell asleep really hard, which doesn't surprise me. through all that effort to clear out the back area of my car so I could see to the rear easier when I turned, when I changed lanes to the right. And then when I was clearing off space to put my equipment in here, I put my sunshade on my rear deck and now it's blocking my view to the behind me. I need to move that as soon as I get parked. So, God, I can't believe this drive at work is taking so long. It's usually such a, just a couple minute drive on Sunday. I just get on the, you know, the freeway to the other freeway and I'm there. I don't even use that much I-10 between, you know, the mini stack and then this lane here on the right. Wow, and there's cars coming. Well, it could be they're just coming from Washington. Say the freeway it must be open, but no, it's not. It could be they're just coming across that that overpass from Washington on the access road there. Um, am I going to be able to set the story out? I'm so out of focus today. Maybe. So I got the bar. She wasn't there. Um, it was super dead, which was sort of a surprise because there was quite the crowd the night before. Um, saying spooky by the Classics Four. Seemed like an appropriate one since a lot of people were dressed up for Halloween. And I love singing that song. Dennis Yost and the Classics Four were a pretty good band. And I don't feel like they get any recognition anymore. You know, it's so funny how some bands from decades ago are just huge and celebrated. I mean, the Rolling Stones are kind of obvious. You, you got you to gotta recognize their longevity. But, and of course, you know, decades and decades of great music, but like the Beatles, you know, the Beatles really are 
in the grand scheme of things, really work together all that long, but just look at how celebrated their discography is. But you had other bands that, granted, didn't have as influential of discographies, but still had a lot of great music, such as the Classics 4, are just completely forgotten. Anyway, I enjoyed singing that song. It's a fun song to sing. Kind of put my own spin on it. And, and then um, the few people that I was there hanging out with, they all bounced too. So I was like, well, shit. The time Priscilla showed up, it was everybody else was either gone or on their way out. This young couple, I, I think the this young gal is super cute. I I think she's my friend Donnie's daughter. Um, was there with new boyfriend, or at least the first time I've seen her there with her boyfriend. Um, but yeah, they were there while I sang my second song, which is my last song. Anyway, they ended up having them shut the karaoke down early because of it. So, I figured I got there enough time to sing quite a few songs. Well, I sang two songs just by virtue of there was like hardly anybody there. I'm forgetting what the second song was that I sang. It was really fun to sing, but then there's really nobody left to hear me sing it. Uh, the one young couple bounced. They seemed to be getting into it. That they bounced off halfway through the song. I can't remember what the hell song it was. Dang, it's really bugging me because I was. I, I felt like I sang it really, really well. Whatever it was. I'm drawing a complete blank, and it's it's not important. What is important is grabbing my vest and my hat. Hopefully they didn't get too lost or displaced. Let me shut things around. Nope, they're all there. Kind of in the area of the center console. Um, it's bugging me. I can't remember what the second song was I sang. I guess it's not particularly important. I was just more bothered by my inability to remember what it was. Anyway, yeah, the only people that were like in the room while I was singing, other than Priscilla, who had just barely showed up, was the young couple, and they bailed about halfway through the song. They were dancing to it, and then halfway through they bailed. Um, and then she sang a Nirvana song, and I think the young girl had also sang a Nirvana song. She was singing Smells Like Teen Spirit, which, God, she was probably not even alive when that song came out. Um, it's really bugging me. I can't remember what I sang. I just remember singing it really, really well and really enjoying it. And then Priscilla sang another Nirvana song. I think she sang in Bloom, and, and then... Um, and then one of the other regular singers who had not been singing that night sang, who usually sings standards, but lately he's taken to singing Season of the Witch by Donovan. And as I've mentioned in previous vlogs, somewhat of a fan of Donovan, and I met Donovan roughly about 14 years ago, and that was a really amazing experience. I don't have time to re relive the story of meeting Donovan, and I'm sure I've done that elsewhere in this vlog already. So. Maybe you'll get lucky and find that video. Um, it's one of thousands. <laughs> uh, yeah, they shut down early. I just kind of hung out at the bar until closing time-ish. And someone vomited on Ruth's, Ruth's window. That was pretty gross. Um... I need to spit the story out because I need to get to work. I'm so late already. Uh, I'm still trying to wake up, too. Um, anyway, I went to Priscilla's place. Uh, I don't have time for the details, but let's just say three nights of sexual satisfaction were apparently too much to expect for her because, um, yeah, at one point I woke up in bed alone and, and got up and she was in the bathroom. I didn't even check to see if the door was locked again. I just went and laid down from the, the couch bed thing into the bed bed because the couch bed thing is so horribly uncomfortable. And of course she always leaves the TV on, always leaves the light on, and I can't sleep in that environment. I need to have quiet and dark. I mean, I'm okay with some music, but crap, she leaves on the TV. I, I It's difficult for me to sleep with that shit on. Although I, at one point I did fall asleep 
And then she made me some potatoes and, and then woke me up, scared the shit out of me when she woke me up. It's like, you know, by the time I'm asleep, that means you took too long to make the food. Just let me fucking sleep. Yeah. If you're, and, unless you're waking me up with sex, just don't, don't, just don't. Or waking me up because I'm late for work. Other than that. You know, she woke me up for potatoes. Potatoes are good. I nearly choked on them because I was so tired and trying to eat. I think I fell asleep before I finished them. Woke up again. Yeah, she was in the bathroom. I went to the, went to the... Went into the bedroom and fell asleep. At one point she came in. At one point I woke up alone in the bedroom and went into the living room and she was asleep there. Instead of coming, when she finally left the bathroom, instead of coming in and sleeping, you know, getting naked and sleeping with me, no, she goes to the other bed and falls asleep completely clothed. This is the kind of shit that makes me not want to be with her. This is the stuff that really, really deeply bothers me. But yeah, she's fully clothed, laying in the, on the couch, asleep. So I go back into the bed, and I mean, I got naked for the moment we got there. You know, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm not really comfortable when I still have clothes on because they're touching me. Um, so I, um, I go back into the bedroom. Well, at one point she kind of comes in, and I was about half awake. So she climbs in bed and wakes me up. But she's, and then I reach down, and she's still got the same clothes on. I'm like, I'm like you've got clothes on. Why you got clothes on? It's like, oh, because I fell asleep wearing them and I'm still wearing them. Okay, that doesn't explain why you haven't taken them off yet, but okay. Well, he kind of gives me a hug and then she leaves the bed again. What the fuck was that about? Well, I ended up rolling over and falling back asleep, and I'm not sure what time I woke back up. I want to say maybe 11 a.m. ish. And. I come out, and she's got the door to the bathroom closed, and she's talking on the phone in the bathroom. She's not in bed with me. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm, I'm just like, yeah, enough. And I just got dressed and went home. Fell asleep. Woke up late. Here I am. I need to go to work. Thanks for coming with me on the drive.